I'll be presenting information contagion in collateralized debt markets. And this is preliminary work with Jin Wook Chang, who is also at the Federal Reserve Board. So first, a uh, disclaimer, this, uh, the views presented in this paper do not reflect those of anybody outside, anybody within the, the Federal Reserve System or anybody associated with the Fed. So the goal of this work is to better understand how incomplete information uh, affects how financial institutions take and share risk. An important function of financial markets is aggregating private information and facilitating price discovery. But in normal, in, in times of stress, when perhaps information matters the most, this function seems to break down with uh, a sharp and temporary increase in uncertainty and pessimism about fundamentals. So an important area of research is understanding how financial markets aggregate private information uh, under incomplete information and understanding how this affects ex ante incentives to take and share risk. So uh, our for focus for today is on the role of information in secured short-term wholesale funding markets. So wholesale funding occurs when a financial institution raises funds on a short-term basis from another financial institution rather than by issuing re retail deposits, for example. So for example, you can think of a hedge fund um, financing its investment in mortgage-backed securities by borrowing from a money market mutual fund or a commercial bank, uh, uh, issuing commercial paper secured by uh, a portfolio of assets to another bank. So this is a segment of the financial system which has been growing uh, tremendously in importance over the past several decades and uh, has also played an important role in the 2008 financial crisis and also in more recent episodes of financial stress. Uh, these markets are typically very liquid in normal times, with the assets underlying the transactions being treated as, as safe, but they're also subject to bouts of sudden and extreme stress, which resemble a mass panic in which these same assets are suddenly treated as highly risky. So the literature has made a lot of progress in explaining these dynamics, um, attributing them to an interaction between market and funding illiquidity. Uh, several notable papers uh, there, although uh, perhaps the most recent relevant uh, paper is that by Brunemeyer and Peterson, um, in which a fall in asset prices causes tighter credit conditions, or also to adverse selection problems, which becomes more acute during times of stress. For example, a series of papers by Dang and co-authors. The severity of uh, liquidity freezes uh, in 2008 and more recently suggest that these episodes were driven at least in part by changes in the perceived riskiness of the underlying assets. So the starting point of our project is that an important part of the story is how beliefs endogenously respond to market conditions. And the goal of this project is to develop a theory of information dissemination in collateralized debt markets in a model with incomplete information and learning and then to use this model to understand how beliefs about fundamentals and perceptions of risk are shaped by market conditions. So there are uh, two distinctive features of these markets which will play an important role in the, in the model. One is that these markets are typically over the counter. In other words, they're uh, decentralized markets in which parties contract bilaterally. And this may affect how private information is diffused uh, across agents. And the second is that the debt is secured by collateral, which implies that changes in asset prices uh, may affect the tightness of credit conditions. And so both of these features uh, are gonna affect how agents form beliefs. So just to get a flavor of the setup we're working with, suppose that there are three dates, dates zero, one, and two, a consumption good and a risky asset, which pays out at date two. And there's three agents, A, B, and C, and for the purpose of this talk, suppose that we just assume that only agent C has direct access to the risky project and agent A cannot directly uh, uh, lend to, to agent C. At date zero, agents can enter into one period collateralized debt contracts, which specify an interest rate and a haircut or the amount of uh, collateral required for the loan. 
While the structure of the economy and the nature of contracts can be endogenized, it's not essential for the mechanism that I'm going to explain uh, today. And so for now, I'll just think it is given. At date one, agents may receive an idiosyncratic liquidity shock, which is its own private information, or also a private signal about the date to return on the risky asset. So after the liquidity shock and the news at day one, contracts are renegotiated at day one. But while agents cannot observe others' liquidity needs or their uh, others' private signals, they can partially infer these from asset prices and also the contracts offered by their counterparties. So changes in haircuts and asset prices can therefore affect agents' beliefs about the quality of the asset. So in situations we call uh, normal times, when liquidity needs are not too large and news is not too bad, then markets function relatively well. In particular, asset prices don't move too much at day one and, and the margin of each contract resp responds largely to different factors. Namely, the haircut specified by the contract mostly reflects lenders' beliefs about the asset value. And given any, any haircut, the interest rate mostly reflects the lender's liquidity need. And so based on the haircut and the interest rate offered by the lender at day one, a borrower is able to separately infer its lender's liquidity need and private signal. Because borrowers are able to disentangle liquidity shocks from bad news, this facilitates a more efficient allocation of liquidity and a more accurate aggregation of uh, private information. And in this environment, uh, haircuts are socially desirable because they reduce inefficient liquidation. On the other hand, when news is sufficiently bad or the liquidity shock to an agent exceeds some threshold, then this mechanism malfunctions, creating an adverse interaction between asset prices, haircuts, and pessimistic beliefs. For example, suppose that agent A, uh, excuse me, agent B receives a large liquidity shock, which forces it to significantly reduce its loan to agent C. And to repay its debt to agent B, agent C is then forced to liqu liquidate some of its position in, in the risky asset. And this causes a fall in the price of the asset. Then agent A observes the, the fall in the price of the asset and cannot rule out that bad news was the cause, even though in reality it was an idiosyncratic liquidity shock. And as a result, agent A's posterior belief upon observing the fall in the asset price uh, about the quality of the asset it, it is more pessimistic. So in turn, agent A requires more collateral for its loan to agent B, exacerbating uh, agent B's liquidity position further. And so in this situation, there's a pecuniary externality in which a fall in the asset price affects other agents' information sets or beliefs. Moreover, pessimism and tight credit conditions may reinforce one another. So uh, upon experiencing the margin call from agent A, agent B may suspect that agent A received bad news about the project, in which case agent B in turn becomes more pessimistic. And this pessimism of agent B uh, causes agent B to raise the haircut and so on and so forth. So the end result is a situation in, in which beliefs become increasingly divorced from fundamentals through asset price declines and margin calls. And this may lead to costly, costly liquidation post and inefficient uh, liquidity provision ex ante. And so given this framework, uh, we can characterize the inefficiencies of this environment and also optimal policy. But um, overall, that's the general idea. So thank you uh, for taking time, the time to listen.